My name is George Collins, I'm the National Postal and Logistics Organiser for the EPMU in New Zealand. It's a private sector union that represents 11 different industries, which one is postal and logistics. And I'm John Anderson and uh, I've done a study on postal banking called Why Canada Needs Postal Banking, uh, which I did for the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. And I previously I was the research director for the official opposition here in Canada, and I've in the past worked for the Cooperative Association and many of the larger unions in Canada. All right, thanks. This uh, two-day symposium was about postal banking, um, the possibility of it in Canada, but also what's happening elsewhere. And uh, in New Zealand, there is a Kiwi Kiwi Bank, which is a postal bank, right? So can you talk a bit about that? Yes. Well, Kiwi Bank came about because of a. Um, uh, well, in 2002, a uh, progressive politician by the name of Jim Anderton, what he did is he wanted a um, Kiwi-owned bank, and that was because um, at the time in New Zealand, all of the banks were Australian-owned. All the profits were going offshore, and um, there was high fees. So Kiwi Bank was set up in 2002. It's been very successful. It's now got over 350,000 customers um, and it's uh, returning a profit, well last year it returned a profit of 97 million to its own in New Zealand Post. So, so that shows it is possible to do this. Um, what you, you were talking about what made it successful, what, well, what allowed it to... Okay. Well, what made it successful was, well the first thing, it had political backing. Um, and you know, I mean Jim Anderton pushed, pushed that. Um, so there was, you know, the lobbying political backing. And the next thing is New Zealand Post has um, uh, agreed that it's a long-term strategy and they have funded it. They've put $360 million into it um, since 2002. And the third thing, what it does is it's different. So its unique selling point is, is it's Kiwi it, and it acts, um, and also, yeah, acts and works on those values of, of what being a Kiwi is, or what being a New Zealander is. I, I think you were saying one of it was uh, like New Zealanders helping New Zealanders. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. The, the, um, some of, one of the mission statements is um, yeah, New Zealander, a New Zealand bank helping New Zealanders, or um, you know, Kiwis helping um, New Kiwis out. So is this something that's possible in Canada? Yes, in fact, well Canada um, has had a long tradition of postal banking similar to New Zealand uh, in the sense that we had a postal banking here, for, uh, it was, the legislation was passed in 1867, the same year as Confederation, just after Confederation, and it lasted from, uh, started in 1868 and lasted to 1968. So we had 100 years of postal banking here in Canada. So we already had that experience. And in fact, the legislation authorizing postal banking is still on the books. Um, so in fact, it wouldn't be very difficult if there was political will to start up postal banking since we've got the legislation. Does it make sense though? Is, yeah. it, is, it, is it something that will benefit Canadians? De 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 definitely, if you look around the world, we see that uh, just about all of the major countries in the world have a postal banking system, and in just about all of them, that postal banking system is, is highly successful. Just the same as New Zealand is successful, it's also successful in France, it's also successful in Italy, it's also successful in many other countries around the world. I mean, the largest, one of the largest banks in the world is the, is the Japan Postal Savings Bank. Um, so this is, this is a model which is very successful. One of the reasons why it's successful and easy to do is because there is the whole infrastructure, both in terms of bricks and mortar and buildings across the country, and there's 6,400 postal outlets across Canada, but it's also the fact that you have the, uh, the staff, you have, you have a workforce which is there, and which, can, which is already working on computers which are linked to, to, to a vast trans-Canada network, it also has the infrastructure in terms of pickup and delivery uh, of money and mail, and so it'd be very easy, uh, with very little effort, to transfer that to add on to that banking services. And John, what that's exactly what's happened in New Zealand. The uh, the retail store network of New Zealand Post has been combined to um, as Kiwi Bank stores. So so this is something which uh, uh, we can see. Not only the, the success of that in many countries around the world, particularly New Zealand, which is very similar in terms of 
as a country to, 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 our, to ours in terms of being a former uh, you know, dominion and uh, this kind of thing. But, but, but it, it, it's, it's also something which uh, uh, we can start with very little effort. I mean, this is not something which takes a great deal of effort because we know how it works in other countries. So it's something that just, oh, how could it work in Canada? We know how it could work in Canada. We've had it before, other countries are doing it now. But what's actually happening in Canada now is that they're, uh, they're cutting the Canada Post and uh, and kind of downsizing, and, and and now we're talking about expanding. So well, that's why that's why the, the political will is, is key here. I mean, in the sense that uh, uh, most people will tell you from other countries that it's uh, very very easy to do. In fact, uh, when I did this study, uh, which is down, which has had ninety two thousand downloads, by the way, uh, uh, on the website of CCPA, which just shows the interest yeah. of, of, of of people in in this issue. Uh, um, when I talked to the British uh, post office, the UK post office, and the person in charge of financial services, I mean, he said, I'll come over to Canada and tell you how to do it. Because, I mean, the point is that it's such an easy model, and even in the UK, which, which, uh, where I, I don't particularly think that their model is as good as the model they have in New Zealand, for example, but even in the UK, uh, this is something which has been supported by all political parties having financial services. So it's, it's not something which, which uh, uh, you know, we have to scratch our heads and say, oh, if we do this, we'd be out on the limb, some weird policy. No, this is done all, all around the world. And there are different ways of doing it. And some of the things they've done in New Zealand, we'd like to copy. Other things maybe we wouldn't copy. We do things a little differently. And each country can, can, can take what, uh, from other countries and from its own experience uh, the, the particular way that postal banking should work. But it's obviously something, yes, it's needed for, for two reasons. One is to, it would assure the stabilized post office system. Instead of cutting home delivery and closing down post offices, this would allow us to, to keep those open, keep the work, and, lay, and laying off 8,000 workers. That's what the Canada Post wants to do. So th th this would stop them from doing that. That's one, one part of it. But the other part of it is that it could offer banking services to many people in Canada who are underserved right now by the, by, by the traditional banking networks in Canada. And, and believe it or not, even though uh, the, the, the big Canadian banks are all in the top uh, 100 largest banks in the world, uh, uh, a lot of Canadians are not well served by banking. They live in areas where there are no bank branches. They are uh, low-income citizens who have difficulty getting uh, loans, difficulty getting even a bank account. Uh, Aboriginal communities who are underserved, uh, uh, rural businesses who, who, who can't find a bank to loan the money, uh, so that a bank could, could, could help really uh, play a very positive role in our society, as well as helping to, to preserve the state and expand the post office. Yeah, and I know uh, Linda McQuaig was one of the speakers at the, at the symposium, and she was saying this could be a really progressive, uh, I don't know if it's a movement or a, or a step forward in, uh, in really building a public um, service and, oh. and I know uh, George you were saying that coming here with with people from different places around the world is kind of like participating again uh, in a fight back against a neoliberal agenda yeah, well, it's going on so. elsewhere yeah, yeah, as well as here. I mean, coming to Canada and hearing all the issues of, of different countries and their postal service and what's happening to them I mean yeah really this is the labor fight back yes I mean, you know, uh, uh, we, we in Canada we have, uh, 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 you know, a lot of people, as I was saying, who are underserved. We have people who are forced to use payday lending services uh, to borrow money, where they charge rates of, uh, well, I think the lowest rate may be about 240% a year. That's the lowest rate. It goes up from there to 1,200% a year. And, and uh, you know, really uh, exorbitant, usurious uh, lending rates. And uh, uh, a postal banking service could offer uh, people short-term loans for, 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 for a decent interest rate and still make money. So, so I, think, I, I, think it, I think this is a very, very important issue uh, uh, for us in Canada. And uh, it's funny enough that the postal service, when they did their major, uh, the Canada Post, they did a major report on the future, uh, which came out in April of last year, and they hired the conference board to do this report. And this report uh, left out, it looked at all the different issues and different ways of helping the post office survive. It left out financial services. It said, we're not going to look at financial services because Canada doesn't need them. It didn't say why Canada doesn't need them. It doesn't say why, why they couldn't be used. Uh, um, and and they, on the other hand, the, postal bank, uh, the, the, the Canada Post did a, did a secret report on, on, on uh, postal banking, which they 
refuse to, to uh, release to the public and which has most of the uh, pa pages in the report redacted. In other words, they, they're just blank. They, they, they said that we can't reveal them because that would, be, that would endanger our, our company discussions. And so we can't let the public know what we reported. But you can see from the headlines that the headlines are a win-win strategy, etc. Et so we can see that the report recommended that in favor of postal banking. They decided to suppress that report and uh, to go another way of closing down services. And closing down services in Canada is really, uh, you know, uh, a way of, of moving towards privatization. Because what you do is you say, okay, the service doesn't work, right? And you run it down even further so it works even less well. And then you say, well, in the end, well, I guess we'll have to we'll have to sell it off. And so this is the kind of their their approach to to the post office. And this is not an approach which really serves the Canadian public well. And I think that that's why people in Canada should be interested in postal banking and interested in what happened in New Zealand. There's a, there's a similar country to ours which is, has been successful in, in, in keeping their post office. Final word? Sorry? Final word? Well, well yeah, I mean Kiwi Bank's been very successful. Um, it, it's been voted over the 2000s the best bank in New Zealand and also it's been voted the best trusted bank in New Zealand. And what it does do is it's providing a revenue for um, the New Zealand Post Group so they can, um, you know, sort of make the changes required in, in New Zealand Post. Um, so, and also what it is, is it's um, profit going back to New Zealanders by New Zealand as a, by New Zealanders as opposed to going offshore. So, like you're saying, win-win. Yeah. A win-win strategy and something which we really seriously should, should examine.